popular, portable, and most likely sporting a pretty awesome cover, the modern paperback is loved by everyone who likes to take a book wherever they go. Join us to discover how soft cover books had a hard hitting impact in this episode of Half Price Books, all things printed and recorded. Paperbound books were printed in Europe in the 17th century, but it wasn't until 1860 that the first true mass market paperback, Valeska, the Indian wife of the White Hunter by Anne Stevens, was introduced in the United States. This and other dime novels were priced at, you guessed it, an affordable 10 cents, and tended to feature tales that ranged from the lurid and outlandish to the extremely melodramatic. The British had their own version of these sensational stories, the notorious Penny Dreadful, featuring episodic tales of withered hags, murderous baronets, and dandy highwaymen. When the fad changed to true crime, titles such as Sweeney Todd, the Demon Barber of Fleet Street murdered the competition on newsstands. The dime format was cheap to produce, but the market was saturated, so publishers took any tactic they could to stand out. By 1896, brightly colored covers were introduced, setting the standard for judging books before reading them for the rest of eternity. However, if you wanted to read Shakespeare mm -hmm. or Dickens in a soft format, you were out of luck. Oh. Quality books were only released in hardcover. That is, until Penguin. When founder Sir Alan Lane found nothing to read at the train station besides glossy magazines or trashy fiction, he landed on the idea of creating serious books for a larger audience. Penguin's first release was a biography of Percy Shelley in 1935, and the imprint's simple, primary-hued covers made it a huge success, selling over three million in their first year. Readers knew if the books were orange and white, they were general fiction, red and white meant drama, green and white represented crime, and dark blue and white signified a biography. For the first time, it was cool to color code your shelves. The US wasn't far behind the serious paperback trend. Pocket Books introduced their first paperback of Pearl Buck's The Good Earth in 1938, followed by a series of 10 titles, including work by Emily Bronte, Agatha Christie, and Dorothy Parker. Hardbacks at the time cost a few bucks, but Pocket Books were priced at only a quarter. Available everywhere from department stores to subway stations, that initial run of releases sold out in just one week. During World War II, the convenience of paperbacks made them a favorite of soldiers, who could easily stash their favorite title in a uniform pocket. The War Department even worked with publishers to produce armed service editions in a huge range of genres, from pulp cowboy fiction to classics like The Great Gatsby. The huge reach of the ASE could turn a popular book into an instant classic, such as Betty Smith's 1943 novel, A Tree Grows in Brooklyn. Because the servicemen were bored and lonely, and the internet wasn't invented yet, there wasn't much to do but read. Many soldiers who weren't already bibliomaniacs came home with a solid love of books. By the time the war was over, the soldiers' taste had influenced what paperbacks were sold. Racy, action-packed stories were all the rage, and lurid, sexy images on the front helped them fly off the shelves. That's clearly how we ended up with classics like Sin on Wheels and D for Delinquent. Kitschy covers may have helped the book sell, but they didn't endear paperbacks to the more serious side of the publishing industry. Most bookstores still refused to sell them. Paperbacks were typically hardback reprints, so Fawcett really shook things up in 1950 with its gold medal books, the first imprint to publish paperback originals. Anchor Books followed in 1953, introducing upscale books with literary merit, and bookstores finally caved and bought all those little spinning wire racks to hold the industry's newest cash cow. In 1960, the sales of paperbacks finally surpassed hardbacks, and the former dime novels were a legit phenomenon. We still wouldn't board a plane, train, or subway without one. This has been Half Price Books, All Things Printed and Recorded. If you'd like to learn more about the history of the paperback, check out our blog at blog.hpb.com for some related resources. Until next time, 